All right, let's, let's start reading. Come on then, let's share a taxi to the hotel. Mikhail offered again as Rose and Abby both nodded in agreement and both sighed a, a sigh of relief. They had been worried about taking a taxi alone in a huge city like Tel Aviv so early in the morning. But God provided, as he always did in everything, a man to escort them to the hotel. Mikhail flagged down a taxi and helped the driver put the bags into the trunk. They then squeezed into the taxi. Mikhail was average type, but was muscular and well-built. The girls got as close together as they could to give him more room. As they drove, he pointed out different points of interest in the early morning light. And just to have you know, in Israel, um, they have a partition between the driver and the, the patrons, the taxi uh, people that are in the taxi in the back seat. So most of the people that get a taxi sit in the back seat, <laughs> just for you to know. As they drove, he pointed out different points of interest in the early morning light. In particular, the magnificent university structure. Along the way, the girls loved getting the guided tour from someone who knew their way around this exotic city. It was first light and Rose was getting so sleepy. They were soon at the hotel and the bellman helped them out of the taxi and into the hotel. The hotel was magnificent. It was new and marvelously designed. Both the girls were ooing and aahing over the beauty of the architect, art architecture, made in very striking mar marble and beautiful colors. There was huge vaulted ceilings with murals on them in the walls. The murals depicted scenes of what looked like ancient cities of Israel. There were very large, beautiful, modern crystal chandeliers hanging from the ceilings and luscious carpets that your feet luxuriated in as you walked. Mikhail watched them both, obviously enjoying their excitement. Soon they were checked in and headed for their rooms. Mikhail took leave of them in the elevator at his floor. I will see you around seven tonight then in the lobby. The restaurant is close to the hotel. I think you'll like it, he said in his charming accent. Rosa's heart moved in response to it and shook off the feeling disgusted with herself. <laughs> he was certainly very good looking and obviously had a girlfriend or a lot of women interested in him, or God forbid, even a wife, she thought. She knew not, absolutely nothing about him. She sighed and followed Abigail and the bellman into their room. It was absolutely gorgeous. There were beautiful beds with luxurious coverings and soft pastel greens turned down with the chocolate on their pillows. They were on the 20th floor and the view was magnificent. She immediately walked over to the window to look out. Look, Abby, see this beautiful sunrise. They both stood there, admiring the sun coming up over the beautiful city. The sun was shining on the water of the Mediterranean, making it look like it was on fire. There were very tall sky, skyscrapers in modern office buildings. Their windows glittered with a pinkish golden hue in the sunrise. Rose grabbed Abby's hand and they both bowed their heads and said a prayer of thanksgiving for their safe arrival across the ocean. And as they said, Amen, Rose turned her head and looked at the older parts of the city. There was mosques, synagogues, and older buildings that looked like apartments. There were also homes that looked new and others that looked as if they had been there forever. It made this city so exotic, Middle Eastern and mysterious. Rose almost wished that they were going to stay here 
longer to explore the city, but maybe some other time. Abby sat down on her bed and started typing on her cell phone. Rose was curious until Abby showed her what she found. It was Mikkel's website, and there was a photo of Mikkel with several other people. The description, the description said he was the chief surgeon of a medical practice with several doctors. It was that it then went on to say that he had, had that he had invented a heart valve procedure that had saved many lives. Rose and Abby were most were most impressed with what they read and smiled at each other. Abby then went to the restroom to take a bath. Rose looked at the, her bed and then hopped onto it. It was beyond comfortable. <laughs> she lay down, closed her eyes, and immediately fell asleep. And that is the end of chapter two. <laughs> Should we do a little bit of chapter three? couple pages. Hey, why not? It's just you and me. <laughs> Chapter three, getting to know you. Rose, Rose, wake up. It's almost 6 p.m. and you have to get ready, Abby coaxed. Rose shook the blanket off that was covering her and looked up at Abigail standing over her. What was she dreaming? Mikkel, was talking to her and trying to tell her something, but she couldn't make out what he was saying. It seemed like a warning. She knew it was something very important, but when she woke up, she couldn't remember. After her bath, Rose stood at the closet that Abby had hung their clothes. She looked over at Abby's clothes and wished she was a size four so she could borrow something. But she would have to settle for her size 10 clothes and nothing seemed right to her now. All her clothes seemed dowdy and old looking. <laughs> she looked at Abigail with her lovely linen colored dress that had a matching coat and pretty matching heels. She felt a twinge of envy that her sister always knew what to wear to make her look her best. <laughs> I've known people like that, <laughs> not me. <laughs> Rose, we need to hurry or we will be late. She turned to look once more in the closet and pulled out her newest dress and pulled her newest dress over her head of mauve and pink pattern. She had liked it when she bought it, but now. <laughs> oh, Rose, you look lovely, lovely, Abigail exclaimed. Would you like me to do your hair? Rose sat down and let Abby brush her hair out and style it. There, said Abby, you look beautiful. After Abby applied a little makeup to Rose's face, Rose looked in the mirror and was surprised. She actually looked almost pretty. <laughs> Rose fixed, or Abby fixed her long dark hair half up and the rest down over one shoulder, and Rose thought it looked attractive. Now she was ready to face whatever was ahead. Rose looked into Abby's eyes and they were glistening. She could tell that Abby was excited about dinner and seeing Miguel. Mm. Do you like him? Rose asked her sister tentatively almost afraid to ask. Who, dear? Mikkel. Well, yes, dear, he's very nice. Don't you like him? Abby queried. Well, yes, yes, I do. But do you like him more than Joshua? <laughs> Suddenly, Abby finally understood what Rose was getting at and started to laugh. <laughs> no, Rose, I don't like him in that way. <laughs> he seems like a very nice man. I'm glad the Lord put him in our path to get us to the hotel. 
God always provides a way for us, doesn't he, Rose? Rose felt happy and relieved as Abby put on her coat and she her jacket as they made their way to the elevator. When they stepped off the elevator, Mikkel was waiting for them. Rose's heart sighed. Could he be any more handsome? He had a dark suit and a mauve colored dress shirt. His tie was mauve and gray pattern. His blonde hair was brushed carefully into place and he was clean shaven. The stubble on his face from the plane gone. She was a little startled that they had both chosen to wear the mauve and gray color scheme in their attire and wondered about it. His eyes roved over her in appraisal, but his eyes were unreadable. She couldn't tell if he approved or not. We're going to walk. Is that okay? He asked the girls. The restaurant is very close and I made reservations. We're going to have to hurry. It's always very busy. He heard them out the beautiful gold colored and glass revolving door and each and took each of their arms to walk quickly. Rose could feel his muscular arms beneath his jacket and a thrill of warmth went through her body. My goodness, I can't believe how I'm acting, Rose thought to herself. Rose was getting out of breath and was relieved when he finally said, here we are. The building was old, as if it had been there for centuries. But the restaurant was modern and lavish, lavishly furnished inside and very crowded with people. Everything that was Middle Eastern exemplified this place, from the Persian rugs on the walls and the murals slim, sim, similar to the ones in the hotel, to the rich, richly colored stone floors beneath their feet. The maitre d' showed them to their table. Mikhail ordered the house wine, and when he came, he poured himself a glass to taste and quickly drained it. Would you girls like some wine? Their house wine is really a good vintage. No, answered Rose, we don't drink. I'll take some tea to, though, and what about you, Abby? Abby nodded in agreement. He picked up the menu and scanned it quickly. Let me order for you. I know what is good here. He ordered in Hebrew and the waiter left the table. Mikhail sat back in his chair and relaxed with an almost peaceful look on his face. So girls, tell me about you, he said as he poured himself another glass of wine. Well, Rose started, as I told you before, we're from a small town in Georgia. We are both widows. We took care of our parents after our husbands died until they passed away. And this is the first time for us out of the country. You are both too young to have lost your husbands, Mikhail commented as he stared at the almost empty glass in his hand. Rose could almost see him debating whether he should pour himself another glass. Actually, Abby said, my husband died in a car accident and Rose's husband had been sick for a long time and finally succumbed to his illness. Cancer, Mikhail asked softly. Yes, cancer of the liver, Rose replied honestly. He must have been very young, Mikhail said almost to himself. Yes, he was. He was only 37 when he died. Oh, I'm 45. Very tragic. Must too young, much too young to die. Mikhail looked into his empty glass and didn't say anything for a minute. He then sat his glass down and looked at Abigail. And you, Abigail, what do you do? Mikhail asked in his Russian accent that made Rose's heart sigh. I was a nurse for many years. I just recently worked in our hospital. 
when the area was devastated by tornadoes. Really? Tornadoes? How terrible. What happened? She then told him about the event that literally changed their lives. He listened carefully and nodded. So you have a new home to live in. How wonderful. But what brings you to my part of the world? Abby answered him, we're Christians. We wanted to see Israel for a long time. And we have been reading about the abyss that they have built in Babylon. And we'll be traveling there to see that too. Have you heard, at it, heard of it? Rose could see Mikhail's jaw visibly tighten, and she wondered fleetingly what that meant. Who hasn't heard of it? But why would two American women want to see some machine having to do with physics that they have built? I would think there would be other sites in Babylon more appealing for women to visit, like the museums or the hanging gar gardens or even, the, or even the theme parks. Abby bristled with his, at his remark. We want to see that machine. We think it's a dangerous experiment. We want to see for ourselves what they are doing. We think it might be causing all the turmoil in the earth right now. The tornadoes, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, tsunamis, and cyclones. Why, there was an eruption in Iceland that sent ash into the air over Europe for many days. Ah, I see, Mikhail said softly and smiled wryly. You realize, of course, there are many experiments going on all over the world most people don't know about, and I'm sure you would consider it dangerous. There was even a small machine like the abyss in your own country before it was shut down. There was talk of funding issues, but others said there were earthquakes that disrupted the magnets. Of course, the four miles of magnets in your country are nothing compared to what they have in Babylon. They have over a hundred miles of magnets that they have been running at half power. When they are done with their upgrade, they will be using all 100% of their power. Mikhail pondered for a moment before continuing. I've read, though, in another experiment there at the same site in your country, they still send beams to an underground shaft in another state looking for dark matter. They call it the guard particle. It is very curious, though. They have had terrible tornadoes there, too. It's not too far from the town with the machine and the experiment they are sending beans from. I watched on the news that there were 160 tornadoes that touched down in that area. He paused for a moment and then continued thoughtfully. There is also another machine in the Middle East that is working with the same intent in mind, a very large microscope looking for particles. I think all these experiments are working together towards the same goal. Abby's curiosity got the best of her and she asked him, what goal? Mikhail thought for a moment as if wondering if he should go on with the subject. I think their goal is to find passages through the universe. I have read books concerning this and I think they want to travel the way movies are depicting now. They have begun to realize that space travel, travel for man is very nearly impossible for any time soon. So they are set in finding another way to go here and there without spaceships. I think it's very curious indeed. I've read a couple books on physics that explain how they are, hope, they are hoping to accomplish this. We believe that too, Abby replied. And that is why these machines are very dangerous. I think there could be a connection to these machines and what happened to our hometown. I believe they caused the tornadoes that touched down and destroyed our home. 
as well as many other homes. We just want to see it for ourselves, what is happening in Babylon. And you are right. They did shut down the machine in our country. But like you said, they are still doing experiments there and there's a possibility of them resuming their experiments with the machine again. He watched them for a moment and then mused. So you are determined and I can't change your mind. Although if it's as dangerous as all that, why would you want to go there? It's a matter of finding out the truth and warning others about it. Our pastor has told us much about it, but has never seen it. We just want to see for ourselves if it is benign or dangerous. We are very aware of the prophecy, Revelation 9 in the New Testament, will be fulfilled, but we can still pray. Rose replied quietly. He watched her intently, studying her openly with amusement in his eyes. He wanted to ask what Revelation 9 said, but he didn't want the conversation to turn into a theological argument. He finally said, You do know you won't be able to stop them no matter who you tell. Some people have tried legally to no avail, but I won't say anything more about it. We may not be able to stop the experiment, but prayer is powerful. When there are many praying together over a matter, who knows? If there are more people that know about this, all our combined prayers may prevent further loss of life and souls. The word says we are not fighting with flesh and blood, but principalities and powers of darkness and spirits with unseen bodies. We have an enemy and his name is Satan. He's using anyone and anything he can to destroy lives and souls with his diabolical promises and lies to become like God. He has been lying to people since the Garden of Eden. Abby answered emphatically. Mikhail looked at them in surprise that two such beautiful women could have such powerful opinions. And he had to admit what they were saying was making him most uncomfortable. Just then, their dinner arrived, and he was very relieved. He then changed the subject and began telling the girls about himself over their dinner. The dinner was excellent. There was first a wonderful matzo soup, and then a delicious cucumber salad. The entree was perfectly cooked lamb, with cuckoos, exotic herbs, and mixed vegetables. He gave them the name of the dish, but Rose was unable to pronounce it, and they all laughed when, when she tried. He then told them that he had just lost his wife of 23 years, six months prior. She had died from an illness they were never able to diagnose and he is trying very hard to go on with his life. My two children, a boy and a girl, are in the IDF, Israeli Defense Force. They are 19-year-old twins and are both gone from home and stationed on the border by Syria. I worry about them very much because it is very dangerous there. So I throw myself into my work my practice has been my savior, and my work helps me to forget, if even for a few hours. His face filled with sadness, and Rose's heart grew heavy with his sorrow. She guessed that that was why he drank so much. But she knew from her own heartbreak with her husband that drinking didn't help anything. It only made things worse. She didn't say anything to him about it, though. When they were finished with dinner, 
Mikhail and Abigail chatted for a little while. Rose listened to both of them express their mutual love of the medical profession. And then they left the restaurant. Mikhail took leave of them in the elevator at his floor. I will be leaving very early in the morning. You have my card. If you ever need anything, please call me anytime. I will help you in any way that I can. And then he was gone. Rosa's heart twinged in sadness when she realized she might never see him again. But there was nothing she could do. He seemed to be more interested in Abigail anyway. He watched Abby quite a bit while they were eating. But who could blame him? Abby was so lovely to look at. Abigail and Rose went to their room and prepared for bed. Mikkel is a very sad man, Abby mused thoughtfully to Rose. There is so much heartbreak in his life. I know how hard it is for a physician to see his loved ones die, knowing he can do nothing to change the outcome. It's very hard for them because they are healers and want to fix things. Rose nodded in agreement and Abby could see tears in Rose's eyes. Rose, would you like to pray for Mikkel? Rose nodded, afraid to speak for fear she would break into tears. Father God, Abby prayed, please help Mikkel through this trial and affliction that he's going through. Please comfort his heart and give him the peace that surpasses all understanding in Jesus' mighty name. And please take care of his children that are by the Syrian border. Please lose myriads and myriads of angels to protect them and all the soldiers and people in Israel. In Jesus' name. Also, please, Lord, take care of Joshua, wherever he is, and keep him safe. Please let him know how much we care for him. In Jesus' mighty name. When Rose looked at Abby, she had tears on her face. Rose knew the tears were for Joshua, and she hugged her little sister. Rose loved her so much. They go both grabbed a tissue from the tissue box and dabbed their eyes and smiled at one another. I think we will be seeing Mr. Gorby Ava again, Abby murmured thoughtfully. Did you see the way he was looking at you? Rose looked up in surprise. No, Abby, he was looking at you. Only when you were looking at him, I saw his eyes. He likes you, Rose. Rose didn't know what to say, but just slipped into bed. Could that be what Mikhail was trying to say to her in her dream, that he liked her? She watched the lights of the city filtering, filtering in through their window and fell asleep. And that's the end of chapter three. Well, we got quite a bit done this morning, right? The rest of chapter two and the and the chapter three, the whole thing. What do you think, dear ones? What do you think is going to happen with Rose? and Mikkel, and Joshua, and Abigail. Isn't it a fun, romantic story? I hope you enjoyed it. And like I was telling you, I know that there are many people that have lost their loved ones and have given up hope, thinking they could never be happy again. But like I've said before, God's plan for you is abundantly above all you can think or ask. So don't despair and don't give up. Just know that God 
if you just put it all in his hands, your whole life, everything, your hopes, your dreams, put it all in his hands. Look how Rose was when they lost their house. She was devastated. She didn't think she could ever be happy again. But here now she has a brand new house. And, and you know, and, and now she's in Israel. Wow. You know, all we do is just trust God. Trust him. He loves us so much. And he wants to give us abundantly above all we can think or ask. So, dear ones, you have a beautiful rest of the day. Read your Bible. And I'll see you again next time for chapter four of Strong Delusions and Lies with a picture of a lovely girl on it. <laughs> okay, just remember though, my text and my photos are copyright. <laughs> okay, dear ones. We'll talk to you again. Bye-bye.